session four. And we ended yesterday with Exodus 3, verse 10. God said to Moshe, Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. God's people, whenever he says my people, have you noticed all over the Bible, it always talks about the children of Israel. That is his people. And by now you understand so well that Israel, Jacob came over the Yabuk River. He wrestled with God and, and he refused to let God go until he blessed him. Remember that was again the angel of the Lord, the Bible says. And yet this angel spoke to him as if he was God. And Jacob started realizing that throughout the night and, and he, he said to God, listen, I'm, I'm not letting you go. I need you to bless me. I need this covenant that, that I find inside of me, this desire to be your people. When I even fought with my baby brother in the womb, I wanted to, to be the one that when I come out, I'm going to be the carrier of the covenant. And God promised his, his mother that the, the firstborn will serve the lastborn. And, but the lastborn is my chosen one. And this man who had the desire, his name was changed to Israel. You and me, we have the desire to return to our father, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Just like Jacob had this uh, desire to return home. And we wrestle with God because we don't understand. We've been taught one way and now we are wrestling with God. We are going verse by verse through his word wrestling day by day doing these studies and and wrestling understanding what our sin is and and begging his forgiveness and and wrestling with understanding how he wants us to live and he sees the wrestling he sees the desire he sees how you are hearing him calling you how how he's calling you back back to the roots um, to be reconciled with the fathers, the roots of the trees, where everything started, Bereshit, Genesis, and, and he sees your desire in your wrestling, and he changes your name to Israel. And those who were called not my people, the ten tribes that were scattered all over the earth, and is now being regathered slowly but surely by the hand of the word of God himself, those who were called not my people will be called again my people. And this will be the new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel, my people. I will write my covenant on their hearts and they will no longer be disobedient to me. Isn't that beautiful? We understand to be called my people by God. Our names are changed to Israel, not you. The Jewish people, we pray that they also return to the house of Israel, the older and the younger brother, together under the throne and the authority and the rule of David. How God said, David will be king over them. I will make them one nation and my, and my servant David will be king over them. Beautiful how we understand through all these prophecies and all these things that the God of heaven and earth what he pronounced, how his people must be and who his people must be and who's going to reign over his people. We understand all that and we call ourselves Israel. And again, a lot of you in the past has had the question, Israel vision, um, because those people call themselves Israel. But so there are many uh, nations and um, um, religions and uh, sects that claim the name of Israel. But Israel are those that is my people. And God sends Moses to teach his people his ways. And this people that follows Moses out of slavery and sin, to be brought to the mountain of Sinai, to learn God's ways, and to be saved from the angel of death under the blood of the Lamb. The, those people are called my people. And their name is Israel. Just like God is called God, but his name is I am who I am. I am that I am. So we claim this name and, and we understand the significance and the history behind it. 
and we understand the covenant between these people and their God. And we are proud to say that, yes, Father, I'm also in Egypt. I also need your instructions to teach me how can I discern between good and evil, not as the serpent is trying to teach me, but as your tree of life is teaching me. I'm in Egypt. I'm in sin. I'm in slavery. I've been uh, separated from you. And thankfully, under the blood, I can return to you. And now I can follow your instructions, follow Moses out of Egypt and learn who you are and what you're expecting of me. And I can make covenant with you at the mountain and go past the mountain and be led back into the promised land. This is God's people. So I send you, Moses, to Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel. And Moses said to Elohim, verse 11, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth your children, the children of Israel, out of Egypt? Beautiful that this man, who thought he was a strong leader, and he started killing Egyptians, and he was, he was ready to bring Israel out 40 years ago by his own strength, remember? And now God has taught him, no, I need you to be a shepherd. Who am I to bring your people? I, the, the, the God of my flock, have taken you out of your own strength, and I've made you humble, O Moses, in the wilderness. And I've taught you to look after sheep for 40 years, being a messianic figure. And now as a shepherd with your staff in your hand, that is who you are. Don't find your identity in your strength, in that arm of yours with which you hit and killed that Egyptian. That is not your identity. Who am I, you ask? You are a shepherd of the living God, and you must lead my people, just like Yeshua. He came as a lamb, and he's, he's called the good shepherd. He didn't come fighting. He didn't come with a sword to conquer the Romans and bring Israel back 2,000 years ago, all of Israel back to the promised land. No, he came as a meek and humble king riding on a donkey being as a lamb that was going to be slain and being the shepherd through that slain lamb's blood as a shepherd under the blood he can bring his people back to God's kingdom until such time that he will take out his sword to slay Egypt and Pharaoh and the whole antichrist system but that is who you are Moses find your identity in the shepherd and that's you and me who who am I who, and you ask also, who are you? Who, who are we that this God of the universe, this God of the heaven and earth, the God that created everything, the sun and the moon came um, storming out of his mouth when he created the mountains, the valleys, the canyons, the huge roaring ocean. Who are we that this God will even give us his attention, never mind his love, never mind his forgiveness, never mind spend so much time trying to teach us his ways who are we we find our identity in the good shepherd that's who we are and joseph also who was joseph that he would be sent to egypt to save his whole family from starvation he was just a young boy remember but doesn't god always work through those who are humble and those who, are, who have many weaknesses. He doesn't choose the strongest, mightiest uh, people and the richest people. And, uh, you know, he goes for the one that's got the seed from the tree in life in them. And most of the times that has always been the second born, not the strong firstborn whom the world expects will take over the inheritance. But he chooses you and me. Who are we? We are no one. But, but neither was Joseph. He was just a young little lad who was Moses. He was, he was just a shepherd that, that ran away from Egypt with his tail between his legs. Who was um, Jeremiah? 
um, Jeremiah 1 verse 4, Then the word of Yahuwah came unto me and started speaking. Again, proving the word of God has been speaking to people all over the Old Testament. And the word of God said, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And I'm going to send you, I've ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. And then said Jeremiah, Ah, oh, my, my almighty God, behold, I cannot speak. Who am I to speak? Who am I to be your prophet? I'm just a child, just like Joseph. But Yahuwah said unto me, Don't say, I'm just a child. For you shall go to all that I send you, and whatever I command you, that you must speak. Don't be afraid of the people's faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says Yahuwah. And then Yahuwah put forth his hand and touched my mouth, says Jeremiah. And Yahuwah said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Just like God's word is a fire, we discussed that. He puts his fire in the mouth of um, this humble, fearful prophet. Just like he put his word in the mouth of Moses. Um, who was it? Isaiah, that uh, God touched his mouth with a coal of burning fire. I can't remember now. Um, this is the, the burning of the word of God inside the mouths of the people that he chooses to spread his word. Same with Ezekiel. Ezekiel 2 verse 6. And you, son of man, listen, don't be afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Moses was afraid of Pharaoh, but God said um, to Moses, listen, I'm sending you to Pharaoh and I will be with you. And he said to Jeremiah, don't be afraid of the people's faces. Don't even look at their faces, just bring my word. And he says to Ezekiel, don't be afraid of them or afraid of the words that they are going to rebuke you with. Um, because they are rebellious and they are a rebellious house but you must speak my words unto them and whether they will hear or whether they will listen I don't know because they are just rebellious but you just listen to me you don't be rebellious you do and, and give the, the words that I give you to give to them and as you do that faithfully you know I can through the house uh, through through the hand of the shepherd, I can bring my people out. Somewhere there is somebody that is going to be willing to listen and those people will come out at the end of the day. And this is what we need to understand. We, we mustn't um, be afraid. I mean, who, who are we really? We are just normal um, people working um, most of us don't even regard ourselves as extraordinary people. You probably think of yourself as a fairly normal person with a fairly boring life. But from God's perspective, that's perfect. You are the perfect person with whom he can do extraordinary things. Not to go out like some of these pastors and say that you are bringing millions of people into the kingdom. They go out and then they preach in Africa and um, they say 10,000 people has given their lives and their hearts to Jesus. That's not what God is doing. Because then that pastor flies back in his private jet to his beautiful Santon home or whatever and he leaves all those people behind. No, where you live and where you work and where you um, have your being you love the word of God and you disciple the people around you he's not looking for prophets he's looking for normal people who are carrying on in his word in his way as Israel as the people that represents the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob just under your normal circumstances Moses was shepherding sheep this is maybe like you going to work every day you're doing your you know, normal work day by day. Moses did his work day by day for 40 years. Just going to work, just doing your job, just an ordinary day filled with the business of ordinary life. That was, that was Moses, listen. He was tending to his sheep um, until he saw something extraordinary. Remember, he saw the burning bush. What was it that, that Moses saw that changed his life? A bush. <clears throat> the fact that the bush was on fire was a little bit unusual, but it wasn't extraordinary. Things do go on fire. But as Moses observed the bush, the Torah says, 
the bush was burning with fire, yet it was not consumed. And that was extraordinary. So Moses said, I must turn and I must go and see. And that's what changed Moses' life. There's a lesson in that for you and me. Moses' curiosity was awakened. And I'm afraid that for many of us, if we had to see an ordinary bush on fire in an ordinary mountain, and although it was burning, it might not have inspired us to turn aside from our ordinary life in which we are busy because we are busy. Even if we notice that the bush was not burned up, we might say, oh, maybe there's a natural explanation or, you know, it's not my bush, it's not my business. And we'll keep on with our ordinary life, doing our ordinary things day by day, year after year. But if you want to have an encounter with God, you have to be willing to turn aside from your plans and from your ordinary life. God isn't likely to respect your daily agenda or wait until you have time. You must turn aside and you must investigate. What is this that God is calling me for? There's, there's, there's a burning inside of me. I need to turn aside and see what is this. I must, I must listen to this burning word inside my ears that's calling me. And God said to Moses in verse 12 of Exodus 3, Certainly, um, don't, don't be afraid. I will be with you. Don't ask who you are. I am with you. And like um, David said, um, I think it's Psalm 18, um, with my God, um, I can jump over a wall um, and I can bend a storm loop with my God. So you and God is strong enough for any job that God has for you. On your own, Moses on his own, smiting the Egyptian and killing him 40 years before, uh, you know what, you're not going to overpower Pharaoh with your own strength. But, but going back after your wilderness experience, after God has called you, going back with God, you will be able to also bring people back to the covenant of God. I'll be with you and this shall be um, a sign to you that I have sent you. So God is giving um, Moses a very important sign. And if you're also being called, to live your ordinary life, but be an extraordinary witness for this God, then this is also the sign that you have. We have to understand that when God says this is the sign, then we have to submit to that. I don't care what the church system teaches. Because God says, when you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve me upon this mountain. God is bringing the people through the hand of Moses back to the mountain where he's going to cut covenant with them and cutting covenant with them and um, uh, offering them the marriage covenant and giving them his instructions for holy living. That is how we serve him if we listen and obey his voice and if we come under his instructions and learn to live that way, as Yeshua said, those who keep my father's commandments and teach us others so will be called the greatest in my father's kingdom. So this must also be our sign. The sign that God is sending you and me to also speak to other people and bring them back to God is we need to bring them back to the mountain. We need to show them that they must sit and be curious and listen to the burning bush that's not being burned out. The burning mountain where the word of God divides the flames of fire through his spirit, his ruach. And that teaches us obedience to his kingdom and, and to his will. What is his will? That is what we need to be curious about and what we want to be able to learn. And that will be the sign that we are sent by God if we bring people to the mountain so that they for themselves can learn about God's covenant. Yes, they come to the mountain only under the blood that was um, um, uh, put onto their doorposts so that the angel of death cannot claim them. And now with that blood on your doorpost of your heart, you sit at the mountain and you learn at the foot of the mountain the beautiful words of God. But as we know, the word of God had to become flesh um, because Israel didn't listen to his word. 
and and they they didn't obey and that's they were always rebellious they were always looking back to Egypt and God promised that he will send his servant um, that will teach uh, his people his ways and he himself will be the shepherd that will bring the lost sheep back and that's why the word of God became flesh and showed us in the flesh he was a man just like us um, uh, God manifested in a fleshly body just like us and he showed us that you can keep God's holy way of living and where you falter I am here to help you get forgiveness under my blood all right, verse 13, and Moses said to Elohim, See, when I come to the children of Israel, and I shall say to them, The God of your father Abraham has sent me to you. They shall say to me, What? Who has sent you? What is his name? Father, what shall I say to them? Oh, Moses, I mean, it's, it's many hundreds of years since Abraham um, lived and, and spoke to God face to face. And Moses was rightfully afraid. You know, exactly what must I tell your children? You know, who are you? Moses asked God about his name. The word God is not a name. The Hebrew word that our English Bibles translate as God um, is coming from the word Elohim. Elohim means the divinity or mighty one. All right, but the word Elohim is also used for strange Elohim. In the Hebrew, God says, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. You may have no other Elohim before me. So God's name is also not Elohim. Elohim is a title that can be used to refer to God, yes, but also to the false gods. Elohim is even in the Bible used to refer to angels and even to judges. Moses wanted to know God by his own name. Listen, if, um, if a man who was hired by the president of a company, um, you know, refers to the president of that company, he just calls him Mr. President. But what will happen if one day he sits down and say, Mr. President, what is your real name? Then he will go um, deeper than just being um, a servant of that president. He will actually get to know that man personally. And that is how we also progress from just calling God, God. And we progress into calling upon him on his personal name. Like we discussed, the flames of fire went onto the, the heads of the disciples at Pentecost and they prophesied in and the people could hear everyone in their own language and Peter says everyone who calls on the name of God but of course in the Hebrew when he spoke Hebrew he said everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah yod hei vav hei, will be saved salvation by calling on the name of God has never changed but if you read your Bible only in English, you might not be aware that God's personal name is yod hei vav hei, because it's not used in the text. This is because our English translators did not translate the name of God. They substituted the title Lord whenever the original Hebrew has God's name. I don't agree with that. And, you know, the... The Greek and the Hebrew scholars can come up with all their ideas and stuff, but I don't agree with that. It, it's not fair, because by doing that, they have robbed us of learning about the name of God for so many years. So Moses said, you know, if, if I come to them, they will ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And the same with you. Normal person going on your day-to-day -day ordinary life, yet you feel the burning inside of you. You turn aside to the burning bush. You get to know the God of Abram, Isaac and Jacob. You understand that this mountain is, is um, where you learn how to live for this God. And now you also get to the personal relationship where when you speak to people, to all the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to the 153 fishes in the oceans 
as you are fishing them because you're also a fisher of men, aren't you? You're a disciple of Yeshua. You're a fisher of men. And you need to also, just like Moses, be sent out to these people. What will you say? What is his name? Are you going to call him God and Jesus and Lord and Master? Learn his name. God said, verse 14, God said, but your Bible, even look at it. It says, the word of God said to Moses. The word of God, Yahshua has always been speaking to us from the beginning. And the word of God said, Aye, Asher, Aye. And he said, this shall you say to the children of Israel, Aye has sent me to you. Aye, Asher, Aye. It means I am that I am. I am who I am. I am and I always will be. I'm the same yesterday, today and forever. I am. There's no words that can describe me. If you look at the sun and the moon and the mighty ocean and you look at the huge mountains and the deep valleys and you look at the darkness of the night sky and the millions of stars and you, and you hear the thunder in a huge hailstorm, I am. I am everything that you can perceive with your five senses and more. I am that which you cannot perceive. I am that which with your 2.4 kilogram brain you cannot understand. All of that you can understand I am. But I'm so much bigger than that. Because if, because if, if you can only understand, or, or let me say this, if you can understand and place God, with your 2.4 kilogram brain. You can put him in a 2.4 kilogram box. He is so big and so eternal and so huge and almighty that, that we, I'm happy to lots of times not be able to answer people's questions. Where did God come from? How the hell must I know? I've only got a, a brain of 2.4 kilos. He, he is the I am. We can ask him one day. Listen, if you want to know where he came from, you better ask him one day. Make sure that you understand the sign of the kingdom of God, the mountain, his instructions of life, forgiveness for your sin, so that you can meet him one day and you can ask him where he comes from. It's just as ridiculous as a baby that's inside his mother's womb and um, somebody says, well, you have to now explain to that baby how an airplane works. I mean, all that baby knows is nine months. He, his life is nine months within um, a watery um, womb where, where all the sounds are muffled. Um, he, he, he doesn't even understand sunlight. How on earth must he understand how a Boeing 747 can stay up in the air? He doesn't even know air. I mean, he's breathing through, his, um, um, through, through the cord. <laughs> he doesn't understand to breathe through lungs. That is like exactly the same with us. How, how can this huge God explain to us that he's eternal? All you know is your 50 or 60 or 70 years that you're on earth. All we as human beings know and understand is the 6,000 years we have here on this earth. And, and we, yet people are arrogant and say, well, if you can't explain God to me, then I'm not interested in him. Well, good luck to you on the day of judgment. When that baby is finally born and he was arrogant in his mother's womb to say, well, I don't understand um, how a Boeing 747 works, so therefore I don't believe in it. Just because I don't understand it now, I'm not going to believe in it. Good luck to you when you're born eventually. And your mother shows you a picture of a Boeing 747. And one day you actually fly in one. Or maybe you become a pilot and you drive one yourself. Just like that, we are waiting to be born out of this earthly kingdom into God's eternal kingdom. And then he will open up our perception to see who this I am is. Paul says, says it so beautifully, isn't it? I look into a dimmed mirror. And, and I only understand partially, but one day I will understand fully when I see face to face. And Elohim said moreover to Moses, This shall you say to the children of Israel, Yahuwah, Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Jacob, 
and Isaac has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. So you want to bring people back to this God. We have to understand that he is the God, he himself, this huge I am. Is himself saying that when Moses brings Israel back out of Egypt to this mountain, um, they must follow Moses because they must believe that Moses is representing the God of Abram, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And, and then we know that we are leading people back to God. We are leading people back to this God, this God who was the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why I've spent so many months with you guys, explaining you the fundamentals of this relationship of God with Abraham, God with Isaac, God with Jacob, God with Joseph. That is why we had to spend so much time to understand the fundamentals, because this is our God. And when we preach to people or we witness to people, this is the God we are witnessing about. This God who has been speaking to all these people by his word from the beginning. This is my name forever. I am that I am. yod Hey vav Hey, And this is my memorial to all generations. And God says in his Ten Commandments, in the Third Commandment, you shall not take my name in vain. Don't represent me as um, Livy Jesus or sweet little Jesus or just as God because that's, that's so general. Through that name only, so many people are just being led um, around. Are they really being led through those names back to the mountain to learn the ways of God? Are they really being led out under the blood of the Lamb, out of Egypt? Or are they still living and remaining in the same traditions as Egypt has? Sun God worship, 25 December, lawless living, you eat what you want, you don't have to worry about kosher. Keeping Christmas instead of the feast of God. The feasts that even I showed you Noah was keeping. You know, if you just use the general Greek name or the general English names, are you really showing the depth of this God of Abraham to people? Are you really bringing them out of the Egyptian lifestyle to the mountain where God's holy commandments are given to you as a covenant? And, and through, through the blood of this lamb and through the hand of the shepherd, really bringing the lost sheep out of Egypt to this mountain. Get to know the salvation of God. Yahuwah is my salvation. Yahuwah is my Yahshua. That is his name. Not some Greek twisted version. Yotai Vavhe, Yahuwah, Jehovah, Yahweh. That is his name. I am that I am. That is me, created from the beginning. I will destroy everything at the end, except that that, is, that has cut their covenant with me and has circumcised their hearts and has received the fire of my word inside of them that has burned up all of Egypt out um, uh, um, all of Egypt that was left in them is burned up and you stand as my bride at the foot of the mountain and I say to you, I am your Elohim. You must love me with all your heart and your soul and your being and you must listen to these words of mine and you must write them on your hand and your forehead. This will be the sign that you belong to me while the rest of the world will have the mark of the beast. On their hand and their forehead. Oh, Moses, verse 16. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them that Yahuwah, your Elohim of your forefathers, the, the um, God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, have appeared to me. 
And Moses came from the land of Midian, remember. He worked under the hand of the Midianite priest. And the, the elders of Israel might say to him, Oh, you coming from that pagan priest, you are bringing us um, a pagan god. No, the way that, that this god is distinguishing himself from the god of the Midianites and all other gods is to say that I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is whom we serve. <laughs>